Hi, my name is Peggy and this is my channel Bespoke Ability Sewing. This is my 13th episode and today is Friday, so it is Friday Sews. Friday Sews is a hashtag that was started by Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room as a way to bring the sewing community together and she generously has opened it up to anyone who would like to participate. So thank you, Jen, for your generosity and thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll consider hitting like, maybe subscribe and leave a comment below. That would be great. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about a recent Eureka moment I had. Um, so I mentioned before that I have a sewing room. It's upstairs in my house. It's the only room that I have upstairs. And it's a, a good size, like it's a long room, but kind of narrow. And it doesn't have a door. It doesn't have closets or any built-in storage. So everything there is just open. Um, and there's furniture in there because I've put it in there, but there is no, nothing, already there. Okay, so now that's just to set the scene. <laughs> um, I'm pleased with how I have most things stored. I have lots of shelves that I have fabric on. I have chests of drawers that I've stored notions and some fabric and patterns, commercial patterns. I have a cutting table. I have cabinets from my sewing machines. But I realized I never came up with a great solution for storing my PDF patterns. Um, okay, now, I've mentioned before that I won't pay to have PDF patterns printed. I'm selectively frugal. <laughs> what can I say? I always print them out and either tape them together or use a glue stick. And because of that, I don't want to have to iron those patterns um, if they have creases in them. So I have been careful not to fold my PDF patterns because I'm not sure what the heat would do with the tape and um, glue. So, <coughs> Excuse me, I, uh, my throat is dry. Um, at any rate, since I wasn't sure whether I could iron these things and I, I didn't think it would be a good idea, excuse me again. At any rate, um, I had a hard time coming up with a good storage solution, but what I eventually did was to roll them up into tubes. Well, I'd clip all the pieces together, roll them into tubes, and then I'd label on them what, what it was, and I'd just tie a piece of scrap fabric around them. <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll put up a photo here of the bin that I stored them in. Um, and so that worked, but it wasn't ideal. Uh, I had to go hunting through them to find what I wanted and true I didn't have to iron anything <clears throat> but I don't know I just couldn't come up with a good solution now I'd seen some things on uh, Instagram for instance people who would fold up their PDFs and put them in uh, legal file folders that were closed on both sides and then store them in a filing cabinet well, that seemed like a good idea, but <clears throat> I didn't think it was for me because then I get back to the same question of I need to iron something and I don't think that would be a good idea with what I have. So I just kept doing the same thing that I had been doing. And then recently, maybe, maybe two weeks ago, I saw a video on YouTube from Judy at Running So-and-So. She's based in New York, England, but she was visiting Lorianne in Oregon. And, um, I, and I will link Judy's channel below 
And Lorian doesn't have a YouTube, but she does have an Instagram, so I'll link that below. At any rate, <clears throat> Judy was doing a video in Lorianne's house. They were doing some sewing projects. And what caught my eye wasn't their subject matter so much as it was what I saw in Lorianne's house. So she had a door to her sewing room and it was open and there was a hook over the door. And then hanging from the hook were her PDF patterns. And I thought, yeah, okay. I like that. I do. And I had actually previously, I had thought of using a hanger. Um, Wawax sells these circular discs that have a, a hanger attached to them with a little hook coming out. And um, they're for people who have, uh, well, like patterns drawn on tag board. And you have to have a special size hole in each piece to then go on this hook. Now I thought about doing that, but then I thought, eh, I'm not sure that I have the right size hole punch and how would the paper hold up and, you know, so I didn't do it. But then watching Lorianne's or Judy's video featuring Lorianne's sewing room, I thought, Eureka, that's it. So she had a bunch of these hangers. Um, let's see if I can close it now. There. Um, and what's nice is that they're like great big clips. And she had her PDF ha uh, patterns hanging from a hanger. And so I immediately went out. Well, no, I didn't go out. I went to my computer. And uh, on Amazon, I found these hangers. So I I've ordered a whole bunch of them and I started putting my patterns on these hangers. So you'll notice I also have some writing here. So this says SA barb pants three eighths of an inch and that is SA is for style arc. The barb pants that's the style the name of the pattern. And then the 3 8 inch is because I thought this would be a handy way to have the seam allowance noted because that's often a stumbling block for me. When I've made something, a lot of times I don't need to look at the instructions the following times that I sew it, unless it's something like the Pietros, which I can't seem to understand. <sighs> But, um, but I don't always know what the seam allowance is. Like the majority of commercial patterns, um, the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. But my PDFs run the gamut from about a quarter of an inch to five eighths of an inch. And that's a significant difference. So I thought, well, that would be really handy to have it on the hanger that says what the seam allowance is. So that necessitated another purchase. I bought a label maker. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but I finally bit the bullet and did it. Um, I don't remember how much this was, but I want to say like between 20 and $30 and I'll link it below and I'll link these hangers below too. But I figured there was, great real estate here to put labels on. And this is what one of my labels looks like. So this says HC for Helen's Closet, Blackwood Cardigan, 3 eighths of an inch. And so I'm just thrilled about this. Then I realized, um, as I mentioned, I don't have a closet in my studio. And I have closets downstairs, but I didn't want to put my PDF patterns downstairs that would sort of, I don't know, be inefficient. I just wouldn't really like that. So I thought, well, I could put a hanging rod up on the wall and I could use that to hang the PDFs. 
But then I thought, no, what I'd really like are valet rods. I, I have a valet rod in my closet and it's telescoping so it can go in or out. And I like to put outfits on there, you know, so that I'm ready for whatever I'm doing. And I have the outfit there and it's just nice. So I realized I didn't need a telescoping um, valet rod. I needed something stationary. So I found these also on uh, Amazon. And you can see they have holes in them. So you can screw those into the studs or at least one and then it hang it's out from the wall and this one is a foot long so i measured the space where it's going to go but i i'm just tickled so i'm not done hanging everything up yet but i'm darn close and this is the most excited i've been about a storage solution because i have solutions for most other things i need to store but I hadn't had a satisfactory one for PDF patterns. And now I do, and I love it, and I'm thrilled. So thank you, Lorianne, for letting me peek at what you have in your house. I think it's a great idea. And I hope you think so too. What, how do you store your PDFs? Um, I, I just find it fascinating. At any rate, that's all I have for today, but thank you very much for joining me and I will link the items I've purchased down below um, and I will link Lorianne's Instagram and Judy's YouTube video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you get a lot of sewing in. Thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you later. Bye!